Well, hello everybody. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I know it's been a little while since I've posted my last video. I actually uh, took holiday for uh, the last week and uh, uh, spent a week hiking around uh, Acadia um, in, in uh, northeastern Maine with, with my wife. She's always wanted to go there. I've never gone there. Uh, so we took a week off uh, in between uh, classes of summer school. And classes will be starting up um, at least for me in the next week or so. Uh, so we really wanted to get this uh, this, this holiday done done with uh, you know, while we, we both could uh, procure time off because the next year is going to be a little crazy. Uh, I did try to actually film some videos while I was on holiday, and um, I filmed the videos while I was flying, and um, uh, the quality isn't all that great. There's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, sound. Uh, ancillary uh, sound uh, from the aircraft and uh, it was really kind of a suboptimal video uh, so I didn't post it uh, so anyway that's uh, why it's been 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 a while but uh, I'm back and I'm gonna try to uh, at least semi regularly do some videos uh, unfortunately I'm really busy for the next year um, uh, with with both work and school and, and, and so on kind of a never-ending story but anyway, today I wanted to talk about uh, a more advanced concept of mechanical ventilation. It's really something that a lot of uh, respiratory practitioners, and uh, I, you know, I would include nurses and physicians and you know, paramedics and you know, people that that are interfacing with ventilators. Uh, uh, certainly not specific to respiratory therapists per se, but but any any practitioner of respiratory care, respiratory medicine. Uh, this is a concept that um, a lot of people really don't use or, or really don't even understand, and uh, I certainly didn't understand it uh, until I had to do you know quite a bit of uh, studying, and uh, and you know obviously there are real no hard fast rules on this concept. I'm actually not going to talk about the, its use in clinical practice in this video. I'll say that for another one, but um, and and that is the concept of flow termination. Certain ventilators have this. Not all ventilators uh, will do this, but a lot of the newer ones do. The PB840, for example, has uh, an option known as eSense, and that is the same thing as flow termination. It's, it's expiratory sensitivity, and um, it's usually a percentage, and we usually leave it at 25% and go about our merry way, not really knowing what the heck we're doing with our patient. So. Today I'm going to try to clear some of that confusion up, and then in subsequent videos we'll talk about how we can use this concept clinically. So e-sensitivity or uh, flow termination is is an inspiratory concept, okay? And basically what it does is when a patient is taking a spontaneous breath, and typically this will be in pressure support ventilation or pressure supported breath, spontaneous breath. Um, while the patient's inhaling, this E sense um, senses when it's time to quit inhaling and and go ahead and uh, transition into exhalation or trigger itself into exhalation. And the way it works is, I set uh, typically it'll be a percentage. I'll set a percentage, and the ventilator, will, based on that percentage, will transition from inspiration into exhalation. Okay, so that's what eSense is. It's flow termination. It terminates inspiratory flow and transitions into exhalation. Uh, I just want everyone to understand what the, it is, first of all, eSense uh, or flow termination. Um, once we understand that, let's now that we understand that, let's go ahead and talk about um, its application. Not its clinical application, but, but a little more uh, quantitatively how it works. And I'll use a real basic example, and I'll use some unrealistic numbers simply because the math is, is a lot easier. Okay, so this is the way eSense works. If I have my eSense set at that generic 25%, what that means is when the inspiratory flow decreases to 25% of whatever the peak flow was, the ventilator goes, ah, it's time to exhale. So let's break this down a little bit. Now, when we talk about inhaling, okay, uh, I'm going to take a breath. And as I begin to inhale, my flow initially is very quick. Air enters the lungs very rapidly. I have, you know, a peak flow, whatever it may be. 
it's very quick, it's very rapid, and then as my lungs begin to fill up, the flow decreases, right? The lungs are filling up, the flow of air into the lungs is going to decrease, and I hopefully that intuitively makes sense, that it's going to start out rather quickly, and then it'll decrease as the lungs are filling. And again, we're talking about a spontaneous breath here. We're not talking about a um, mandatory breath. Now, the spontaneous breath may be pressure supported, um, likely will be pressure supported, uh, but still, the flow of gas initially is going to start off rather quickly, and then it'll decrease. Now, let's just say, to keep the math simple, that my patient um, is in pressure support ventilation, and they initiate a spontaneous breath and they take a breath and it gives them whatever pressure support we have set. Now, let's just say, just to keep the math simple, obviously it doesn't have to be this, this is just a simple example, it can be any flow you want, but let's just say that this patient's peak inspiratory flow for this breath is 100 liters per minute. So, at the peak flow, the peak, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the quickest uh, velocity of air, the highest velocity of air going into the lungs is 100 liters per minute. Now, that is the peak flow. Everyone, would, hopefully, everyone would agree with me. Now, as the lungs begin to fill, the flow is going to decrease. Right, the lungs are filling up. Flow is going to decrease. Now, if I have the flow termination slash essence set at 25 percent. Well, what is 25% of 100 liters per minute? Really easy, it's 25 liters per minute. So in this case, if the peak flow is 100 liters per minute, as the patient's lungs begin to fill up and the flow decreases, once the flow gets to 25 liters per minute, because that's 25% of whatever the peak flow was, the ventilator goes, ah, time to exhale now. The flow has decreased the 25% of whatever the maximum is, I'm going to let you exhale now, patient. And then the flow, inspiratory flow is terminated and the patient is able to exhale. That is the basic concept of flow termination or expiratory sensitivity. And hopefully that makes a lot more intuitive sense and hopefully that clears up a lot of uh, misunderstandings about this. And in subsequent videos, we'll talk about how we can use this. Um, really, there are no hard, fast rules when it comes to e-sense or flow termination. It, um, but I can talk about some general, some really general um, considerations um, that we can do. And, and actually, it can help with uh, ventilator patient uh, synchrony, uh, specifically with patients that have large leaks patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or patients with restrictive um, lung disorders. Okay guys, I'm going to cut it off here and uh, as, as always, thanks for hanging in there.